Hello and welcome back to Adventures in Costuming and Cosplay. Today I am going to be learning how to make an 18th century half bone stays by J.P. Ryan. And I've never made this before. However, uh, it looks really remarkably similar to a 16th century corset that I've made, so I'm not terribly worried that I will have trouble with it. So let's see. Materials, fabrics, cutting diagrams, don't need that. My next step is cutting out the pattern pieces. So far, it seems like a pretty professional pattern. Although I really hate it when they write notes outside the margins of the pattern. All right, I finished cutting out my pattern pieces. Uh, I'm going to iron these and then I will start cutting out my fabric. So I doubled my fabric and I laid it on. And now I've got my good fabric scissors and we'll be cutting it out. So I'm reading the instructions here. And it's kind of interesting. It's a little bit different than what I normally would do, but I'm going to follow the instructions as closely as I can, because one would presume that the person who made this pattern knows way more about it than I do. So I got my first pieces cut, uh, sewn together, and I'm gonna iron my seams open, and then start on whatever the next step is. I'm very careful to make sure that my seams are all the way open. Press seam open, using center front seam as your guide, stitch through the cover and seam allowance to make casings. Following their directions, and I'm sewing right on the edge. All right, wow, that seems really tiny. Okay, so I thought I might have some quarter inch wide boning here and it turns out I don't. So I'm just gonna have to suck it up and sew it. I measured the opening and it's more than a quarter of an inch so theoretically I should be fine it just looks so tiny it's scary to me my main concern about sewing it with the boning casings literally as part of the seams is that if I have to do any adjustments it's gonna be really challenging hopefully in this case all the measurements are correct well my measurements are correct and uh, and it'll fit just perfectly the first time because it could happen really it could I finished sewing my pattern pieces together I went to the store and I bought two different kinds of boning uh, I got the spring steel boning because that was what I really wanted and I bought this featherweight boning this isn't my first choice. However, the spring steel boning only came in certain sizes in my local store, and they're really not long enough for most of my boning casings, so I'm going to have to use this. Tracing lines from a pattern is easy. Use carbon paper and a tracing wheel. These are available in the Notions section at your local fabric store. So that's all my lines traced, and so now I'm going to have a cup of tea, and then I'm going to sew it. on the shoulders. This boning has a lot of points on it. When I trim it down, it still leaves me some pokey edges. Even when I try and cut it around the corners, and it doesn't seem to really file nicely because it's these little tiny bits. So, I'm experimenting with tool dip. Now normally I might take some tool dip where you actually dip the stuff in it, but I don't have any of that. Uh, this is what I have currently. So, to finish my ends, Spraying a little bit on a piece of plastic and then dipping it in. 
on the ends and setting it out to dry. And hopefully that will help keep prevent it from poking through my fabric. I hope. Now I wish that I had more of this in longer pieces because it curves really nicely this way, whereas this stuff doesn't curve sideways nearly as well. So in some of these spots, I don't think it's gonna work as nicely. And I'm sure you can get a roll of this, but you have to mail order it. So you have to plan in advance. Don't wait till the last minute like some people. So I got all the boning in and uh, notice that when I put the boning in, I did it so that the curve curves so that it'll curve in towards my, my body on the top and bottom because that helps it look, look better in the long run. So Brian was kind enough to put in my grommets. So everything is done except for I have to go in and sew on my seam binding around the top and bottom edge and I've got six hours in the car on the way to California that I'll be able to work on it. If you're interested in learning more about how I do bias tape, check out my bias tape quick tooth. Sewing on the seam binding by hand was by far the most labor intensive part of this project. It wasn't difficult, but it took me about seven hours to get it all on. And I did sort of cheat at one point because I was tired and I didn't put in, I was supposed to put in a tab at the bottom that I did not add in the front because I didn't want to do the extra sewing. Uh, it, it doesn't actually affect the fit of the pattern at all in this case, so I'm not worried about it. I'm very happy with the result of this pattern. It was reasonably easy to put together and I only had to do minor alterations to make it fit me. Next time I will take it in a bit all the way down the sides uh, so that it sucks me in a little bit more in the stomach because I feel it could be tighter there. I was surprised that Miss Ryan directed that the corset be laced all the way shut in the back. Most corsets intentionally leave the gap over the spine. Uh, she also told me that it was supposed to be spiral laced in the back, which means that instead of the lacing holes be next to each other, they're offset. And that's what happens when you don't read all the directions. For your historical reenactment project, then this is perfect. It's, it's very historically accurate as far as I can tell and I think that this is a great pattern. Overall, I give this pattern a two thumbs up. So if you like this video, subscribe and give us comments below or suggestions for a future adventure in costuming. See you next time.